Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back and seeing what we are up to today on this Sunday. So I have quite, yes, I have a lot of flipping animals going on today. So in today's video, we are doing animal makeovers here on our channel. This is just part of getting ready for our open house, trying to work through my stash of all my thrift store finds. So there was quite a few of them, so, and I am happy to announce that I'm trying out some different paint. So I did order some um, Dixie Belle paint off of Etsy. I don't have a regular supplier, so nope, I just ordered whoever the first supplier was that um, came up. That's how I ordered it. So in today's video, with in today's video, I am sharing the process of what I'm doing to all these birds and other animals to get them ready to resell. So yep, it's that time to flip some birds and some other animals. Yep, these are those things that I just think are super cute in the thrift store that I just can't pass up. And boy, do I have quite a collection of them. So what, for whatever reason, these little animals find their way into a thrift store, I am happy to pick them up when they catch my eye. And then I do have these extra items that have been laying in my stash that were part of thrift hauls. And yes, I need to get these done. I need to get them for sale. They're not going to sell if they're sitting in my hoard undone. So now that I got them all staged for you, it's time to group them all together, figure out how I'm going to be painting them, similar items. I've got my resin, my wood, my metals, just kind of trying to figure out in a game plan because when it comes to these type of items, they all kind of get something a little bit special. So yep, not only are they dusty from sitting in our workshop, I need to get them all cleaned. I just have a bucket of hot water and super clean. And then I need to get all this price tags off. Even just the price tags from the thrift store for any manufacturer's tags also. And while I have my hands on them, I can take a little bit closer look and I can see that this wooden duck has a big crack and maybe it had been dropped. So I'm just going to use some wood spackle just to fill that in. And then for this little rolling horse, I just taped off its little yarn tail. Then with this horse on a stick, it spins around. It's hard to hold because it is so spinny. So I'm just going to take some of the Starbond CA glue and glue it into place. If I can take the clocks apart, I will. So I'm definitely this little birdie clock. I, I was able to take that one apart, but unfortunately the Eddie Bauer one, nope, I could not. So I'll just take some Dollar Tree contact paper and just protect the face of that clock. The fastest and the easiest way for me to get all these items sprayed and painted up is to be able to use my Graco 2 True Coat 360 handheld sprayer and I'm going to be using the ready to use a black onyx to get a good portion of these sprayed up. I needed a little assistance for holding these balls in place while I tried to spray them. So I started off with some little Dixie cups. Now I'm switching over to some Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer 1. This I find is much better for spraying the metal items. That's why I said sometimes when I get this whole grouping here, I just there's multiple techniques and products that need to be used when you have a grouping like this. And then I'm going to be using that same spray paint for the glass bottle. So now that my black is dry and I can tell because it is not shiny anymore, I'm going to go ahead and seal that black in because I want a, the finished coat for some of these. And some of these are going to have a next coat, but it's the black that I want to see when I go to distress it. So I want to seal this black paint in using the Rust-Oleum's clear coat. Now this coat has turned a little iffy on me. It's okay on the wood items but uh, so far yes i did have a little bit of problems with the metals items of the clear coat where i had to sand some of them down so i'm just working through the stash that i have and i may not be purchasing it anymore 
Now I needed to separate these out. I got the other side already sprayed up. You already see me spray. So flipped them over, got the rest of the spray, did the exact same process of spraying the underneath black and then sealing that in. But now I am separating these out. I have ordered some Dixie Belle paint off of Etsy. I don't have a supplier. So whoever the first store I came through on Etsy that had them available is how I purchased that. So yes, I'm trying to really go through and I'm trying a little bit of technique yep usually have you always seen me paint these white but since I had done white with some of that antiquing wax I absolutely love that look so yes I am trying a different color Ashley purchased the drop cloth color on his own to do a project that I had that I wasn't going to share with you but is included in one of these many videos of getting ready for the open house and I absolutely love it I love that it goes with my drop cloth fabric and that I decorate my own house with and resell myself and that it also goes with crockery that one I decorate with and I resell myself so perfect to go in our booth so I just kind of had to make the executive decision of what colors I bought, what I thought the pieces would look like. Could I antique over this type of paint? Could I distress this type of paint? So, yep, I'm just, just going to town and getting these all painted. Now, some of the bigger brushes didn't always work, and I had to go in with the smaller brush. It, it's a nice, smooth, silky paint if you've never tried it. I, that I'm just This is my first time really getting to use it, and so far, so good. So now my next color choice, and I know you're all like, that's not really a color, it's just like white, is the buttercream. I know, but I'm going with what would coordinate with my booth. This is just how I like to do things. So, yes, the buttercream is definitely... A close cousin to that drop cloth. And I know when I'm out thrift st thrifting, this is one of the items I never pass up. If I find a wooden chicken, a wooden bird, a wooden any type of animal. Okay, that goes with the farmhouse theme. Um, I can't, yes, because they always sell really well. In my area, anyway, they are hot sellers. So yes, my next color choice is that French linen. It's a taupey, let's call it taupey. Got a little bit of a purple hue in. It almost reminds me of the Waverly chalk paint mineral that we all love so much, but just on a little deeper level. So you would think that I had purchased all three of these wooden ducks together, but nope, I did not. Now for these, I'm going to be using the cocoa bean color. I know it is brown and it's only going to be a hue, a shade. Yes, it's just going to blend in with this black. But there's just something about a wooden duck. I have done them white, swans, what have you. Um, white, black, and they've all sell, sold for me. So I thought it would be fun just to give them that nice, deep, oh my goodness, I do love this brown color. Sometimes when you're in the process of painting items, you're like, oh, well, you know, I started off thinking that I was going to paint my clocks white, and then I changed my mind thinking, you know, I've done white clocks, why not? And I think that this drop cloth fabric actually matches the numbers, if I'm remembering right, the numbers inside of this clock. You would be here all day if I showed you every little piece that I was painting on today. So yes, I just wanted to share with you how well the first coat is on, but the second coat is even better. I know nothing about this paint, so when I went on to do my second coat, I just started putting it right onto the items, unlike the chalk paint that I had been using where I had to have a bowl of water or spritz it down as I'm, so far I didn't notice any problems um, going on to a second coat, having to do any kind of water with it. You all can let me know that are regular Dixie Bell users. And the nice thing about doing all those items, it was a round robin game and then they were just dry. So I just kept doing the whole circle and getting that second coat on. But I did have a couple items that I just envisioned in just black. So I did not order a black one because I, well, I've got my Waverly ink that I absolutely love. So usually this Waverly ink for me is a one coat coverage. So, yep. So this little light, I know that it should have a little glass on it, but I think if I change out the bulb, just painting it black, it will do, I think it's just going to pop. I like the rust. I like how that aged. I do check it out. It does work. So, yep. I'm just going to go in by my hand and just paint this up black.
And then along with these little spools uh, turned into lights themselves. They're nice little simple little additives to somebody's vignette, to somebody's display. Though sometimes um, the wooden part of them, yeah. I had painted up originally that white part and I just didn't and painted it black and I just did not I thought it made it even stand out more so that's why now I'm going back in and painting the, the spool itself and then let's let's chat about coffee grinders now I have coffee grinders they catch my eye I think they're beautiful but I have never sold one you guys I've had three in my booth I've moved them around I moved them here moved them there displayed it this this that way let me know do the coffee grinders sell for you because they are not selling for me. I have a beautiful copper one that nobody's even touched. So when it came to this one, I had already picked it up. Weak moment, like, Yvonne, why'd you pick up another one if they're not selling for you? So, yes. So for this one, yep, I am going to paint it, paint it up. And, of course, the coffee bean color because it's a coffee grinder. So we will see how this one sells. So it was really hard because I think they're very unique. And I think I watch people purchase them at the antique store. Maybe they just don't go looking in our booth for them. I... I can't explain why one thing sells and one thing does not sell. But, yep, I had it. I'm not going to return it. So I'm going to get it painted up and see how this does being painted. Now, the coffee bean color had wonderful coverage on these ducks. I did not feel the need to do a second coat because I knew that I wanted to go in and distress them and get down to that black. And I don't care if some of it, um, it, it doesn't really, like I wet it and then I sand it. So I know some of the underneath but I want them to look aged I want them to look stress distressed so I don't mind it's just the hue of the brown and the black that I want to see and I know with the sandpaper I'll probably get down to that that underneath that's the whole point of distressing so yes I, it does I, I noticed that I can't just move it just with water that I need to have that sandpaper additive but I already love how this little duck is distressing so now that I have those water distressed, they are dry. I make sure that I let them dry before sealing them in with a clear coat. And because these are wood items, I don't have any problems with that Rust-Oleum clear coat on wood. I think it's because it can absorb into the wood. So yes, just getting them sealed in. rest of the items I'm going to be distressing it the same way. I'm just going to use a wet wipe, some 220 sandpaper, and just move some of that paint off. Now some of these items like these resin items, they just distress differently and I was hoping that more of the black would pop through on these little bunnies, but I, for whatever reason each item always distresses differently and for this one it wasn't it was going right and right going right down to the original color so sometimes you're like oh why did i paint that black when i'm still seeing that color it's some items just do that so since i don't see a lot of that black underneath that wasn't quite the distress scene that i had visioned in my head i'm going to go ahead with some antiquing wax and i've got my clear wax on backup if it goes way too dark so yes just some straight antiquing wax to kind of bring out the details in these pieces i'm going to go in with that clear wax and wipe a lot of it off i just want that antiquing wax to sit down in all those little detailed areas now that was quite a transformation, wasn't it? So my original thought was I was just going to be water distressing a lot of these pieces and just getting down to that black I had done. Um, I think that you've seen the video, I think I listed it before, where I had a metal cast iron set that when I water distressed it and sanded it a little bit, the black was what showed. But on all these little resin pieces, these little, the wooden pieces, is just sanding right down, going right down to the original color. It's just not distressing and this is the same day process so it's not like I let it dry overnight by any means I this is a whole day if you can see my hands they're a mess I got multiple multi colors so I guess it wasn't I wasn't really achieving the look that I envisioned in, for my head in my head and that happens when you're in the process of doing something but I have done the Waverly white and then I had put antiquing wax to pop out the details and animals and they have all sold for me so I'm hoping the same for this.
So I thought, why am I going to, ha why am I trying to sand these pieces when it's not sanding to the look I want? So just stop the sanding process and just go in with that antiquing wax, wipe it on, and then wipe off any of those excess <laughs> to just, I just want it to be laying in those detailed areas. And I'm just absolutely amazed with quite the transformation from what the paint color was to what the antiquing wax. No, that was not my vision. My vision was for the black to be distressed and showed through. But hey, apparently this is what it is supposed to be. Yep, I just stopped trying to even distress any of it, any water distressing, any sanding, and just went in straight with that antiquing wax. Now see, these were painted in the buttercream and I can't really tell much of a difference, but once the antiquing wax are, there is a little bit of hue. It did take the antiquing wax just a little bit different than the drop cloth did. And then even for my little lamps that I had painted black, I just, I did not distress them at all. I just love what antiquing wax does to black paint. So to seal this chalk paint in, yep, I'm just going in with that antiquing wax. So now I'm on to some metal pieces, so I'm hoping that these distress down to the black that I want to see because I do not want to antique my clocks. So yep, I'm taking that wet wipe, I'm rubbing it on, and then I do need the assistance of some sandpaper to get that to move so I can see the black. And then I'm just going to press down very gingerly just with a 220 sandpaper in a little bit of prayer that please just show my black so I can have this distress the way that I want it. So so I, I do notice that, yes, I, I am able to get that distressed look that I'm looking for on my metal items, just not so much on the wood or the resin. Seal this clock in. I'm just going to go in with the Varathane finishing wax. I believe this paint probably needs to be sealed in with something. And I do not have a lot of polyacrylic on hand and I do not want any of my metals to crinkle. So I am not going in with that Rust-Oleum clear coat. But I think that this feels like it's making this paint nice and smooth and protected. Here's where I did my happy dance because I have done clock faces before where I'm like, I painted the clock and I'm like, oh, that paint doesn't match that face at all. But God wink moment, look at those numbers and the outside of this clock match. And now I'm just going in, this luckily is a glass front, so I'm going in with my scraping tool and just cleaning up that little bit of edges. And actually when I sprayed the Rust-Oleum on this, to um, seal that black in, it rolled my contact paper, so it pulled it away from all my edges. So I just always like to share any tips, good and bad, with you all while I'm in the process of doing things, because things happen. Sometimes they're good things, and sometimes they're bad things. Okay, so now we're on to the glass. This is kind of nice because I have all these different materials that I have a testing this paint out on. So I'm doing that same thing. I'm trying to water distress my bottle. Um, I'm trying to go very gingerly, but I do notice that a lot of times when I was sanding, um, yes, yeah, some of the black did show through, but sometimes I went all the way down to the glass itself. So the clear popped back out. Not a situation I was used to having with the chalk paint, but we'll deal with it. The big surface areas that went all the way to the clear, I'm just taking my Waverly ink with a little bitty paintbrush and just touching the areas where I want to see a little bit more black through or black on top <laughs> as it be. And then so that I'm not rubbing on the bottle anymore, I'm going to switch over and use some of the polycrylic spray to seal the paint in. And I cannot believe that I thought I hit the camera, but I, yeah. So on this little a chalk cement piece, all I did was go in. I absolutely loved the coordinating colors of the Waverly and Fawn, Waverly and Mineral, Waverly in the taupe. I had done some pottery look vases that I absolutely loved those tones together. So instead of painting the whole thing in that pottery kind of look, I'm just going in with a paintbrush and I've got a lot of paint on and I'm just dabbing it. This was a, just a heavily little distressed piece and I just thought it would be fun just to go in and just do specks of these coordinating colors. 
If that spiked anybody's curiosity, I did end up putting them in the booth to sell. I wanted them to go with my decor, but that with all my crockery, it just kind of didn't. So the fawn one that I painted did sell, and I just recently put in the candlesticks in the open house, and they sold also. But right now, the mineral one is still in my booth. Still working on a few more details here, and on the set of three balls, I'm going to treat these just like I did a Dollar General Hobby Lobby where I just put numbers on it. And the big set, the one, two, three, have already sold. The ones from one to six have not. Could be the price or not the right person. I only have like a $15 price tag on them. So, but the wooden balls are not easy to one paint or to put a number on. So I have actually tweaked my technique just a little bit when it comes to doing, um, Yes, putting the letters onto items now. So I'm using clear packing tape. Before I had used the two inch Dollar General masking tape, but doing those bread boxes, I'm like, yes, clear tape when it comes to individual items is a little bit better. So you definitely can see all the way through. So yep, now I've just put all the balls onto the top of paint cans if you wonder what I am using here. And so this is the IOD, um, typesetting font numbers that I am using along with the stays on ink, but I do refill my stays on ink with IOD ink. The paint can lids are helping out really nice. And then as you saw, I folded over to make some handles on that packing tape. So I had something to hold on to. I'm going to put one of the numbers on each side as best of coordinating on each side that I can, but I want to make sure that that ink is good and dry, so I just use the assistance of the blow dryer. Now I'm kind of placing my finger, eyeball, and eyes, probably that perfectly imperfect. It probably won't be perfect, but yep, so getting that number onto the other side. And I kind of eyeballed thinking maybe more than two numbers, but it, it just is really hard to, yeah, then get opposing sides with numbers, so two numbers per ball it is. And now if you want to just leave them as is, but you know, I have an obsession with Waverly Antiquing Wax. So, yep, and then I got my standby, my clear wax in case it runs too dark, but I'm just going to take the top and the bottom that do not have the numbers, and I'm just going to shade that little area in, just give it that I've been aged and wore over time look. So I'm just gingerly going in with just a fingertip. I can always take more off <laughs> or put more on. I just want to blend it in. So now I want to fade this in a little bit more. So I'm going in for that Verithane Clear Wax and I'm just fading it down, just blending just those corners down. I don't want to take all that brown off. I just want to fade it in. And after I got that side the way I want, I wasn't sure if it would leave a mark since the wax was still wet, so I used that paper towel. And so now I'm doing the same exact thing to the bottom. And then, yep, for the spe speckled shelf sitter, I'm going to do that exact same antiquing wax. This is a whole theme for this whole video here. Since I couldn't get it to distress down to that black that I wanted, I you, sometimes you just have to rethink. I've already got them all painted. Kind of feel like maybe I wasted my time painting them black, but nope, I it's just a process, guys. I'm not I'm not too worried. I would have it's a process that I probably will always do starting off with the same color, base color to begin with. So yep, just that same thing, antiquing wax, wipe off with some clear and just get it into those detailed areas, making it look aged. And I just have to share this funny with you. I have not had to buy another bottle of antiquing wax since before the shutdown. I may have hoarded on a little few too many bottles. I think I'm falling down to um, opening. Yeah, and I still think I have two big bottles to spare. So I'm, uh, I might have been the reason there was a shortage. The f coffee grinder, I love, don't you just love this brown color? I love that coffee bean. I need to find some more things to use it on. But now I'm just going in with some 220 sandpaper and I'm going to be a sanding and distressing those edges, bringing it down to that wood that I want to see. I'm going to be doing some antiquing wax, of course, brown and brown. I love black. Oh, anyway, so yeah, but I, so I started to do that little um, handle, forgetting that it was a plastic <laughs> black piece, but yeah, it's all good. 
But before doing the antiquing wax, I want to put a little bit of wording on here. So my original thought was to do coffee. So I did all the coffee, got all the word letters out, and it didn't fit. And if you all know the problem with coffee is when you have a alphabet stamp set, you have to double use letters. So yep, I proceeded to put the word coffee on only to figure out that it did not work. Uh, so sand off, repaint, and then rethink of what word I'm going to use. Okay, yep, I'm going to use grind. It probably was meant to be on this coffee grinder anyway. One, I can use individual letters and I can make sure that it properly fits. So same thing, I love the packing tape little hack of making little handles, being able to see my numbers. I like to space my numbers out on that flexible stamping mount so I can make sure that my letters in, are in line. For some reason, the coffee was just a hot mess and it got painted over. And on the ink pad that I'm using, it's a Stazon. I believe it's called Cotton. So that is the white for the dark colors. Yep, they do have a whitish color to stamp with. We all know in a perfect world everything would turn out perfect but this is a DIY and this is crafting so nope it doesn't. So now I can go ahead and use the antiquing wax to seal all this paint in and go right over those letters to make it look like that grind had always been on there. Why I fast forward through painting all those animals because there this was a huge group guys I'm so sorry and everything needed so many different little things. So yes, I have the cross and I have the butterfly that stayed black. I'm using this redesign, just this simple little word. I know that it's not a Bible verse and somebody should come out with a Bible verse. I would definitely buy that in a heartbeat. So same thing using that cotton. I'm going to be stamping just some simple letterings. I've never done a black cross. I've done a lot of white crosses and I just think the lettering, oh my goodness, is just going to tie this all together. Now, the cotton came with this little refill bottle. I don't know if that's normally how it always did, but I want to make sure that I'm really transferring my image, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get it refilled. And then it has a little squeegee tool to help it along to get into that sponge. So I'm just going to pick out on this notes, this redesigned stamp, just the wording that I want. It's really kind of hard to read anyway. Some of the bigger wording you can you can see like the word thankful. I am going to kind of emphasize that little word later, but right now I'm just getting it all inked up. I'm free stamping here, guys. I didn't even use my flexible mount. I just went for it. So, yep, I'm just kind of visually trying to see what area is going to cover the most surface area on here and then just gingerly tap it down making sure that I don't care that it's not a complete that it may be half on half off I want to just get the general wording on there I want to make it look like it has wording or the wording has faded just by rubbing it just a little bit some of the area that just has too much of that black showing I'll just go back in and I'll just, yep, I know it's upside down, but it is okay. That's the way this is going to fit on the bottom of this cross. And then on the top of the cross, there's a little bit more of a space. And I want to emphasize the word thankful because I definitely think that that goes in perfectly with this cross. To finish up the cross, I'll go in that's got that little raised area there, taking some 220 sandpaper, hitting that just a little bit. This is going to tie that distressed wording in. It's going to just, just tie this whole piece and get that nice and sanded, and then I'll put some antiquing wax to age it just a wee bit. And when I painted this butterfly, the galvanized metal was just absolutely beautiful. So I didn't really paint the other side of it at all. I was able to, but this did have that, oh my gosh, I put that rust limb on there. It crinkled. I had to fix a wing. <sighs> anyway, so I thought about decoupage. 
you know, putting the paper on there, but I don't know, I've done that, been there, done that. So, but after doing the wording on the cross, I'm like, I wonder if, I wonder if I can just do some of this on these butterfly wings. So let's see if this works. And now you'll see why I put that towel, towel where I put the towel. That way I can control my wording. I don't need it to be clear. I just need it to be just a little bit of something on these wings. Then where I had to touch up on the wing, pulled up. Oh, that darn Rust-Oleum. <laughs> it's okay. We'll deal with that later. I'll just work on each. I got four wings here. We'll deal. Sometimes you just got to go back and deal with something later. Nice thing is that ink Waverly chalk paint is usually a good fix for my black. So just going in and touching up just a little bit and then I'll have to seal it in. And then a little bit of antiquing wax. Oh my gosh, I love the wings. I just love just the simplicity. You don't have to actually read it. It's just that. Yeah, I like it.
what did you think about flipping the bird? <laughs> flipping bird. Yeah, there's not any. Yeah, anyway, so. Okay, so yes, I just absolutely, I have a hard time passing up animals when I see them in this thrift store. Yep, and I just, I do, um, yeah, I like the Dixie Belle paint. I have no complaints whatsoever, other than I was hoping that when I painted the black that I was going to be able to water distress it and get down to the black, which I, which is what I was used to chalk paint. So any of y'all that use the Ch Dixie Belle paint line, please give me it, did I do something wrong or just this is how it has to be distressed or it's not made in distress? I don't know. So, yep, kind of, kind of going into that blind. But I did achieve um, the antiquing look with it, with that Waverly Antiquing Wax to the rescue, as always. So I did absolutely love how they turned out. It's funny how that drop cloth and that buttercream were very similar in cover colors, but that's pretty normal for as paint goes. So other than that, I absolutely loved how everything turned out. Yeah, sometimes you have a game plan and sometimes you're in the motion of it and you're like, hmm, reroute and <laughs> figure out what to do. So I hope I have inspired you in any way in today's video to look at thrift store finds in a new way. Give, um, yeah. I stepped outside my box and tried something different. I'm trying, guys. So thanks for watching today's video, guys. And as always, if I have inspired you in any way, give me a quick comment, a like if you feel so inclined. So if you are new and watching our channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what I'm up to. Bye. Bye.